Hey, hey, and welcome to another Tech Tuesday. This is Chad from Ascension Worship, and this week I'm going to show you how to use the select button from your digital mixer to control Super Rack Performer. Hey, 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 what do you say? Yes, it's that time again. It's Tech Tuesday. So a few weeks ago, I did kind of a teaser video just to see what kind of interest people would have. Uh, and I was able to successfully use the select buttons on our Behringer wing to select the racks on Super Rack Performer. Uh, and the reason why I kind of teased it, I was still trying to figure that out. I kind of want to ask people, you know, if they tried it. Um, and at the time, I was having to use two paid programs to make that work. And that would add an additional like $85 to your rig. And I wanted to see if I could make it cheaper. So rather than rush it out, I spent two weeks working through this. I spent a lot of hours on this, believe it or not. Um, and I was able to not only reduce it to one app instead of two, but that app is actually a free app called Companion. You might be familiar with it. A lot of people use that with video switching and that kind of thing. Well, we're using it to control the uh, Super Act Performer with the wing. Now, real quick disclaimer, what I'm going to give you guys this week is specific to the wing. Um, if you are comfortable using Companion, you can adjust this to work with other mixers. I can confirm that you can use it with the X32, and it looks like you can use it with uh, Allen Heath D-Live, SQ5, 6, and 7, uh, and a bunch of Yamaha consoles as well. But what I'm going to release today is for the wing. Uh, and if you want to modify that yourself, you can, or if there's interest and you want me to make a version for the other consoles, I can do that as well. But for right now, we're just going to do the wing for this first version. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to set that up and everything you need to get it going. Also too, real quick pandering moment here. Um, people have been asking me over the years if there's any way that they can donate to the channel. Um, so today we're trying that out. We have a Zell link uh, in the description of this video. If you would like to donate to that, I won't turn it down. You can send that through Zell. Uh, if not, again, I'm putting this out for free. So that's up to you if you want to give or not. All right, so first of all, in the description, there will be a link to this uh, Google Drive folder. You can see currently we have a Behringer wing set up in here. Inside, there are two folders of different files that you'll need. So go ahead and save those to your computer. We've got one file for Companion, and then we've got two files for Super Rack Performer. All right, the first thing we want to do is create a MIDI connection that will be used between Companion and Super Rack Performer. Now, what I'm going to show you is for Macs. I'm sure there's a way to do this with PC as well, but I'm going to show you the Mac way today because that's what I have with me. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up here to the top right-hand corner of your screen, click on the little magnifying glass. That is for um, um, Spotlight, which is a great tool to have. And we're just going to type in the word MIDI, might I? Oh, gosh. There we go. Good to see my keyboard. All right, and then you're going to go to your audio MIDI setup. Now, if it doesn't look like this with the MIDI studio up at the top of your screen, go up to window and the second option should say show MIDI studio. That's command two is the key command to open that. And it's gonna look a little bit like a jumbled mess on here. What you're looking for is this red one that says IAC driver. So double click on that. And then in the properties for the IAC driver, make sure that the device is clicked online. And you'll probably see something that'll say ports with bus one on there. If that's all you see, you can double click on bus one and rename it. Otherwise, if you have other things going on, click the little plus icon. It'll give you a new bus and you can rename that. I've got mine labeled as two super rack performer. Um, so I suggest that's what you do, but you can do whatever you want. But for the rest of the video, that is the bus that we'll be using. It's the two super rack performer and then hit apply. All right, and then you can close this and forget that it ever existed. It's just gonna run in the background for you. Next, we're gonna open up Companion. Again, there'll be a link in the description for how to download this. Um, once you open it up, you're gonna see this little window in here. Two things, uh, first of all, is start minimized and run at login. I suggest you have those clicked. So that way, when you open and close your computer, um, you don't need to go and find this and open it up. It's going to automatically open, but it'll be hidden in the background. Um, there will be a little icon at the top of the screen where you can go to get this page if you want to. But we're going to go to Launch GUI. And it's going to take you to this page where you can control everything. 
All right, so the first thing we're going to do is go all the way down the left side to import export. And you should see in the middle an option for import configuration. So we're going to click on that and then go to the folder wherever you have saved those files that I gave you. And you'll see only one of them is uh, available. That's uh, companion MIDI. And then it's got 2025, 11, 24. So that's November 24 when I made that file. Uh, if you are doing this at a later date and you see a different number, that means I've gone through and updated it. But this is the version for right now. So just double click on that. And then you can just, unless you're using this in a, with an existing companion file, you can just go to all the way to the bottom and hit full reset and import. All right. And then you should be good. So at the top left, again, we're going up here to connections. And you'll see now there are connections for MIDI and the wing. So let's start with our MIDI. We're going to click on this. Over here on the right side, MIDI in does not really matter for what we're doing right now. You can have that on whatever comes up. But MIDI out needs to match what we just made, which is the IAC driver to Super Rack Performer. That's the one we just made in the IAC driver. All right. And then you can hit save on that. The next connection is the wing. In here, you'll need to put the IP address for your console and then what type of console you have and then hit save. Now, if you're doing this for the very first time, this little green check mark, if it doesn't show up, if there's like a circle going on, try turning this off and back on again and make sure you have the green check mark. Now, very important, if you followed my video from before and you remember I talked about using uh, the different setup options in the wing um, for the network card, if that's what you're using. Um, if you have separated on there, then you're gonna need to have a, um, basically two connections to your computer. One that is sending the card information into your computer and another that is sending the um, actual control information like what people use when they mix their ears. Uh, or if you can see on my screen right now, at the bottom right hand corner where it says switched. Now that's the default mode when you install that card. That means that both the ports on the back will send both of that information out there. So if you feel comfortable with that, then you can do that. And it's just one connection into your computer. So that's how we have ours connected today. We have the Behringer wing. We're coming out of one of the ethernet connections on the back um, into my super rack, uh, sorry, my, <laughs> my Mac mini. It is super though, my super Mac mini. Um, and that's what we're looking at today on this screen. So if you've got your green check mark on both MIDI and wing, then you're good to go. You can close this window. Don't quit um, Companion. Again, it's just going to run the background. All right, next, let's move on to Super Rack Performer. In Performer, I've got a brand new uh, scene opened up on here. We're going to go to Setup. Make sure you're in Audio Setup. At the very bottom here, Controllers. We're going to click on this first one, and we're going to add a MIDI controller. Down at the bottom left, there's a little cogwheel. Click on that guy. All right, and it should look something like this, where it's mostly blank. Um, we are going to, on the left side, we're going to select that IC driver to Super Rack Performer that we made earlier. And then over on the right-hand side, we're going to go to File, Import, and again, go to that folder that we made, and you should see Super Rack MIDI settings, and again, uh, 2025, 11, 24. So double click on that. And you should see something that looks like this. Uh, I'm not gonna go too far into depth here, but basically what we have happening is we have hot plugins, which are 12 channels at a time, and they are note on pl uh, messages from one to 12. We also have hot snapshots, um, of which there are basically banks of 12 channels, um, and they are note on 21 through 28. You don't really need to know what that means unless you're going to be modifying something yourself, but that's how that connects between Companion and Super Act Performer. So once you've got all that done, you can close this. You should see MIDI controller with a green on message on there. You're good to go. All right, and then finally... We're going to load a starter scene. So up at the top right, we're going to click this little drop-down arrow, go to open session. 
you can say no and then go to the folder and then you'll see super act performer starter again with the date 2025 11 24 open that puppy up all right and it is currently working you can see as i'm selecting channels over here we are changing channels on super act performer so a quick note about how this works if we look in our overview here you can see that I've got 64 racks and every single rack has a F6 plugin that is loaded up on here, but it has been disabled. So if you don't have F6, don't worry. This should still open up just fine. It's just going to be grayed out like it is right now. If you do have an F6 and you want to use this, either you can right click on it and go to enable plugin and you'll see it turns blue. Or if you hold down the control key, and click on these, they'll open up as well. So what happens is when you select a channel, so for example, if I select um, channel 28 on here, it selects rack 28, what it's doing is it's referencing this F6 on rack 28. Well, if you want a different plugin to be what comes up when this is uh, called up, then you can change that. So we're gonna go, let's type in fuzz. I really like this MDMX fuzz. But you'll notice when I do that, if I go to a different rack and then try to come back, it doesn't work anymore. So what's happening is up here in your snapshots, you can see it has recalled snapshot three, which is channels 25 through 36. Over in the hot plugins, you've got racks starting with rack 25 all the way down to rack 36. And you'll see that because we changed that plugin, we don't have a plug in here on number four anymore. So with that MDMX set up, I'm going to hit the down arrow, go to set a hot plugin, and you can see that hot plugin four, it does not have anything assigned to it, so we will assign this. Now, if you do that and then you go to a different bank and come back, it'll be missing again because we need to update that snapshot. So we're gonna go up here to three, which is 25 through 36 and we're just gonna hit store snapshot. And now if I go to a different channel and come back, it'll come back and it'll reference this plugin instead of the S6 that we had in there before. And there you go, this should now be working for you. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. If you wanna send me some love through Zelle, I won't turn it down. Again, that is in the description for this video. All right guys, until next time, have a great week. Again, this is Chad from Ascension Worship. I hope this has been helpful for you and your team. Come back here every Tuesday for new information.